Hardline on News Radio 930 WBEN. This is Dave Debo. Coming up in about 20 minutes or so, off to meet the press at 12 noon. Uh, today, they're talking all about the economy. Economic advisor Christina Romer from the White House is there. And then they kick around a really interesting roundtable. They've got Alan Greenspan. They've got Michigan Governor Jennifer Granholm. They've got former Massachusetts Governor Mitt Romney, of course, from last year's presidential campaign. And that crazy guy from CNBC, Jim Cramer, to kick it all around. That's coming up on Meet the Press. This next half hour, I, I really don't want to turn today into a let's defend Governor David Patterson day. But uh, so much is happening in Albany. Coming up at 12 noon, he's unveiling across-the-board budget cuts to keep things solvent for this next year. Yesterday, he was in town talking about Buffalo's waterfront and new money for them. Now, the two, at first glance, would not necessarily seem to be on the same page. Hey, you're cutting over here, but you're giving Buffalo's waterfront huge amounts of money. What's that all about? A person who can help explain it for us whenever we're talking waterfront issues is Buffalo Congressman Brian Higgins. He joins us now. Sir, thanks for being here. Thanks, Dave. Thanks for having me. Uh, explain where this money, the waterfront money, is coming from because, again, at first blush, there could be a little bit of a dichotomy there until we know all the details that you can share. Well, what we're trying to do is make uh, an economic dead zone into uh, an economic uh, productive area, both at the inner and the outer harbor for the past 50 years. People have been denied access uh, to uh, Buffalo's waterfront, perhaps our greatest uh, natural resource, uh, and uh, that's all changing now. So this is an investment, and keep in, keep in mind, in times of, of severe economic contraction, uh, this is when innovation is, is, is most needed, and, and uh, it's during recessions that companies like Intel and Microsoft are founded. So uh, finding creative ways to inject new economic viability into areas that have been economically dormant for, 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 for decades uh, is what's important here. So what the governor has outlined is a creative plan uh, to remake Buffalo's waterfront, to create jobs in the short term, and to produce sustained economic activity over the long term. There will be over $10 million of tax revenue generated from an area that hasn't seen tax uh, revenues in, in, in decades. So uh, this is a good investment in the future of Buffalo and Western New York. And the other thing that we need to do, and keep in mind, this is very, very important, we don't want to be dependent on Albany. We don't want to be dependent on Washington. We want to become economically self-sufficient and independent. And the more we move forward on, on progress on the waterfront, a, a new peace bridge, uh, the more economically self-sufficient and independent we will become. But this money that uh, they're speeding the payment up for, this money is not per se budgeted money out of Albany. This is power authority money, right? Yeah, we, we devised a plan. Uh, back in 2005, we won a 2005 settlement uh, with the New York Power Authority. Uh, it's, a two, it's a $279 million payment over 50 years. The net present value of that today, if we were to securitize it and sell it, turn it into cash, would be about $50 million. Um, what the plan that the governor has outlined yesterday and what we've been working on for the past several months with him is that he will reduce the term from 50 years to 20 years. Uh, so $279 million paid out over 20 years, which enhances the value of, of securitizing that in the financial markets. So the net present value of $279 million over 20 years is about $105 million. So you're looking at $55 million in net new money uh, to go for the build-out of Canal Side, which, again, will create jobs in the construction trades in the short term, but also will produce uh, sustained economic activity uh, moving forward. Tell me more about the build-out of Canal Side. That's basically taking Bass Pro and a lot more and making retail down there? It, it, it's a combination of things. The Canal Side development project is 20 acres of land uh, that hasn't seen, uh, has seen virtually no economic activity over the past uh, 20, 30 years and producing an exciting uh, combination of public access, which we've done with the Central Wharf and the Commercial Slip, and we're uh, restoring the cobblestone streets today, the original cobblestone streets, uh, to keep the historic element, to protect them, to preserve them, to celebrate them, and uh, in, in, in promoting new commercial mixed-use development, of which Bass Pro is just a very small part of that. You know, people, you know, we need to understand that this is not about Bass Pro. And I just want to be honest with people. 
Now, Bass Pro was announced 10 years ago, and they had no business announcing it. Not Bass Pro, but everybody that was involved with it. And I'll tell you why. They weren't ready. They weren't ready. It's a very complex process uh, that is dictated by both federal and state law. So what we did is we went back and said, okay, now we have to do this logically. We have to do this directly uh, so that we have a plan. So uh, we have a waterfront to develop, with or without Bass Pro. We hope that they'll be a part of it. But if they're not, we will find something else to fill in that space. And I will tell you, Dave, the last 36 months, and people see it. You know, I often heard people say, well, we're not going to get waterfront uh, development in my lifetime. Let me tell you something. The Outer Harbor is going through a fundamental transformation, the creation of a new parkway, which will be completed in less than a year from now. Not only will it make the Outer Harbor more accessible, but more productive, because lands that weren't accessible for 50 years, 300 acres of land, will now be accessible for commercial mixed-use development, park land, and, and residential development. At the Inner Harbor, there's tangible evidence of, of progress at the Inner Harbor. The next 36 months, are going to be a period of incredible progress. And uh, this city and its waterfront future, uh, our best days are immediately in front of us. We need to be optimistic. We need to be moving forward. The time for planning, the time for debate is over. We are moving forward to create a new uh, waterfront, uh, a new buffalo, uh, a new image from uh, our old declining industrial working waterfront to one of, of, of excitement, of confidence, of vibrancy uh, moving forward, which will remake uh, the image of Buffalo and Western New York. So uh, the next 36 months are going to be a, a, a period of incredible progress. And, and the governor, by, by, by demonstrating a great vision, a great vision about uh, the full potential of Buffalo waterfront development, uh, is helping in these efforts. Now, tell me a little bit of where this money will go, because I've heard you in the past talk about how uh, infrastructure developments will help bring developers in. This is not necessarily money that is then therefore going to the developers, is it? No, it's, it's money that will pay for the public infrastructure that is necessary to attract private investment. See, you know, the, the, the people in Buffalo and Western New York for 50 years have been bamboozled. You know, the big development project, you know, $100 million, $700 million is coming into Buffalo. Oh, really? And then what happens? Nothing. Because we as a community uh, fail to do our due diligence about the kind of public investments that are necessary to make the waterfront accessible. Look, you can be next to, you know, the greatest waterway in the world, which we are, but if you can't get to it, it's not very valuable to you. So what you have to do is the infrastructure investment to make uh, uh, access, uh, make the waterfront more accessible from the land, but also from the water as well. You know, you talk to boaters in Buffalo and Western New York, you know what they tell you? you know, the first thing they do before they get on their boats is go to the bank because they're looking for destinations. We want to create uh, Buffalo as a destination for the Great Lakes, so people from Cleveland and, and Southern Ontario come to Buffalo and they experience uh, this exciting, vibrant, uh, a waterfront that's emerging in Buffalo and Western New York. So this is all about economic activity. This is all about economic development. Uh, the fundamental uh, uh, fundamentals of which are to import new wealth that isn't here uh, naturally in Western New York from other areas. That's what other communities who thrive economically have learned, and that's the concept that we're embracing with the great work of the Erie Canal Harbor Development Corporation. People like Jordy Levy and, and Larry Quinn and, and, and Mindy Rich and Maureen Hurley and, and uh, so many others who have been uh, a, a great uh, part of, of, of this effort, and uh, we're just getting warmed up, so it's very, very exciting, and people should be very, very optimistic. All right, before we let you go, were you in D.C. this week? I was. I imagine it was fun to be from Buffalo uh, in a warm place when all over the news everyone's looking at blizzards. Did people come up to you and tap you on the shoulder in any way? No, you know what? Let me, let me just say this. Um, it, you know, the more I travel and it's throughout the nation and the world, the more unique I realize Buffalo is. Uh, Buffalo and Western New York is a great, great place. Uh, the weather is just incidental. People in Buffalo and Western New York work harder than anybody else in the nation. Uh, we have great educational institutions. We have a great quality of life. The ease of access from point A to point B. When I'm stuck 
in traffic on the on the uh, Parkway heading from Baltimore uh, Airport to Washington. I, I just I'm always thinking about Buffalo that you wouldn't experience this kind of stuff. Yeah, I've done that too, and it's it's a pain, much more of a pain than we've got here. Yeah, we don't Dave, we don't realize in Buffalo, West New York, what a great quality of life. Look, we have problems, but you know, let's let's you know we can confront those problems, but let's embrace the extraordinary opportunity here. We are situated on an international border that, that, that creates all kinds of opportunity for us. So um, weather is just a, a very, very uh, minor aspect of our existence. Uh, Buffalo West New York is a great story to tell, and uh, anybody in Washington or anywhere else in the world that wants to hear it, I'm willing to tell it. All right, fair enough. Congressman Biggins, thanks for being here this morning. Thanks, Dave. Thanks for having me. Sure.